Hey there, this is day three of Passion Week, and we are covering the title of Hurt in Light of the Lamb of God. Our passage today is John 12, 20 through 38, and we're looking at this contrast of what it looks like of being kind of hurt in the light of the crucifixion of Jesus, and how do we walk in our faith in light of the suffering and understanding God's redemption. And I want to read this passage to you as we're looking at it. It's John 12, verses 20 through 38. And we're going to draw some things out from that about this Passion Week and what Jesus was walking into. So verse 20 of John 12, let's pick up. It says, Now some Greeks were among those who went up to worship at the festival. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. And they questioned him, saying, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Now Jesus replied to them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Let me read that again. Key verse. John 12, 25, the one who loves his life will lose it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Verse 26, if anyone serves me, he must follow me where I am, and there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. And now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But that is why I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came and said, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Now the crowd standing there heard it and said, wow, this was thunder. And others said, no, no, this was an angel that has spoken to him. And yet Jesus responded and said this, this voice came not for me, but for you. Now this judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be cast out. But as for me, I will be lifted up from the earth, and I will draw people to myself. And he said this to indicate what kind of death he was about to die. And then the crowd replied to him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? Now, Jesus answered and closed with this. The light will be with you only a little while longer. Walk while you have light so that darkness does not overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. While you have light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. And Jesus said this and then went away and hid from them. And it closes with this. Even though he had performed so many signs in their presence, they did not believe him. This was to fulfill the word that Isaiah the prophet spoke. Lord, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And this is why they were unable to leave because Isaiah also said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so they would not see and would not hear with their eyes or see with their eyes and they would not understand with their hearts and turn or else I'd heal them. And then Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke about him. Nevertheless, many did believe in him, even among the rulers, for they had loved the human praise more than the praise of God. So some of them even did not confess publicly, but believed him privately. So here's the, the struggle we have. And when we look at the hurt in light of the son of the lamb of God, that as we see Jesus going to the crucifixion, how can God suffer and set us free in the suffering? Shouldn't he conquer? And, and so much of Isaiah's prophecy speak about this conquering king. And yet Jesus said the way he was going to conquer was through death. That phrase in verse 25 is the key verse that we want to hone in on and is kind of our word of encouragement today as we think of day three of Passion Week. Jesus said, the one who loves his life will lose it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for all eternity. And he said, how can a seed have life unless it first dies and falls to the ground and then it grows up? And Jesus was telling these disciples that though I'm going to the cross and though he was going to hang on the cross, this was going to bring life. And they didn't understand it. But even at the end of this passage, John gives this word of encouragement. Many believed. And what that means for you and I is even though that we may go through suffering, 
As I've done ministry here at Calvary and seen families go through it and husbands and wives and children, that through the suffering comes this life of understanding that God is working in the midst of that something greater, eternal life, that he meets us in the midst of that. And as we see Passion Week coming and Jesus coming triumphantly on a donkey and then going to the cross and going to the judgment seat and then going to the grave in Resurrection Sunday, we can't get to the resurrection unless we go through the crucifixion. And what Jesus is pointing to us here in John 12 is we cannot love our life so much that we cannot believe in Jesus and accept him and this truth that he is setting us free. To not love this life so much that we hold on to it so tightly, but that we release it and say, God, I trust you that even in the midst of the suffering, like what Jesus went through for us, is actually what's bringing life for us, is that through this death of Jesus and believing in him, that we'd have life. So may we be encouraged as we see this on day three of Passion Week, in light of the hurt and the Son of God going to the crucifixion, Jesus was pointing to this ultimate sacrifice that he says, do not love your life so much that it takes the place of just believing in him, but by believing in him, you would find life in his name. So may we be encouraged in that this Passion Week as we think of the life of Jesus Christ, his death, his suffering, and his glorious resurrection. So may we be encouraged in that to find life through the death of Jesus. God bless you all.